Improve your Python and Pygame skills by building the classic Pong game, but with some new features. Rohan created this course and it's a great project for beginners. You will learn how Pygame can be leveraged to create engaging games with unique mechanics. Let's get started. Welcome to this Pygame Pong course. This is where we modify the traditional Pong game by adding in multiple new features such as increasing the movement speed at times all the way up to cloning the objects to confuse the opponent. I am a content creator at SNDS. We make videos about machine learning, data science, and some general programming videos in Python and Pygame like this. Now I do want to mention that this course is for those who have intermediate knowledge of code. So if you're able to understand the looping structures such as the while loop and the for loop, and if you can understand the conditional statements such as the if, elif, and else, then you should be good to watch this video. But with that said, if you're a complete beginner, then you can still watch this video and see what you can make out of it. Now, I will be using Visual Studio Code as my code editor. Also, make sure to install the Pygame module onto your computer. I'm not going to go too deep onto that because there's just tons of tutorials out there on how to install the Pygame module. So I'm just going to presume that you already have it installed. Now, with all that said, let's get into the video. Let's take a quick minute to tell you what we will be covering in this course. We will start with going by building the metrics of the original Pong game where we first create a window and then draw the required objects, that is the ball and the paddles. And then we will define the movements for these and then the collisions such as the ball colliding with boundaries or the ball colliding with the paddles. After this, we will be building our first kind of new element, which I'm going to name this as creative angles. You will get to know about this in detail when you get to that part of the video. Then we will be creating two comprehensive brand new elements, which I'm going to refer to as Gadget pair 1 and Gadget pair 2. The first pair will comprise of the smash element, which will smash the ball back onto the opponent, and the flash element, which will teleport the paddle up or down to a specific distance. And the second pair will comprise of the ball cloning and the paddle cloning, which, as the name suggests, will create a clone of the respective. And then finally, we will be adding in the scoreboard on the window, followed by the end screen or the winning screen. All right, let's start with importing Pygame. First, import Pygame. And then I'm just going to go ahead and type pygame.init. You will have to initialize the module first before you do anything. And now I will define the width and the height of our window to be 1000 pixels, comma 600 pixels. And I will define this inside the initial section. And then to create a blank window, which I'm going to call as WN, you will need to type in pygame.display.set underscore mode. And inside this, you will have to kind of give in a single element which contains the dimensions. So I will define another tuple inside this and then type in the width, comma, the height, like that. So what this does is it creates a blank Pygame window with the width has 1000 pixels and the height has 600 pixels. So when you talk about the Pygame window in particular, let's say that this is a dummy window for our Pygame window. The initial position is always going to be here. So this position will be called as 0, 0. But then as we progress towards the right, the x-axis is going to increase. And then when you progress towards the downside, the y-axis is going to increase. So this position will be the maximum in terms of the y-coordinate alert. So when you go towards the right, this is going to be 1000, 0 because this is the maximum point of the x-axis. And as you go down, this will be 0, 600. And then as you move towards the right, this is going to be the maximum point that is 1000, 600. This is really useful when you want to define the positions of the objects that we want to draw on the screen and also the scoreboard on the top left hand side and on the top right hand side as well. Now what I will do is create a main game loop. This is where all of our animations, the visual effects and the motion graphics will be happening and they will be happening constantly to the updated latest statements. So to do this, I will define a while loop and rather than keeping this as true like this, I will define a variable known as one and then make this true and give it over here. So that if at some point we want to break out of the game or just close the window, we can just simply make one as false. So inside this main game loop, what I will be doing first is I will type in for i in pygame dot event dot get. So the way I like to explain this statement is whatever you do inside a pygame window, let's say you're trying to press the quit button to exit the window. Pygame will identify this, Pygame will know that you have pressed the quit button, but then it won't know what to do after that. So what it does is, let's say if the user has pressed the quit button, then Pygame will store this in pygame.event. And what we're doing here is getting all of those events one by one and storing it in I. Like for example, not only the quit button, let's say the user is trying to press the up arrow key to move the paddle up or the down arrow key to move the paddle down. All of them, all of the events are stored in pygame.events and we're getting them one by one and storing it in I. 
so that we can check for a particular event and take specific actions accordingly. Like for example, when the user pressed a quit button, then we will have to instruct the code to just close the window and break out of the loop. Or another example is just, let's say if the user presses the up arrow key, then we have to make sure that we instruct the code to just move the paddle up when the up arrow key is pressed. I will check in for the quit type. So if I dot type is equal to equal to pi game dot quit, this will check for if the user has pressed the quit button and it will return true if they have pressed the quit button. And if this returns true, then we can simply make run as false. Now, before running this program, let me just create another section and call this main loop. Now let's run our code and see. Here you see a blank Pygame window, it says Pygame window, and then when you try to close the window, it closes. Nice. Also, there is one more thing that I want to mention. Is that you see here that it says Pygame window. You can just change this to whatever you want. By just typing in Pygame.Display.Set underscore caption. And inside this, you can type in whatever you want. I will type in Pong, but better like that. Now when you run this code, you see there is Pong but better over here. Nice. Now let's get started with drawing the objects and to draw anything inside the Pygame window, you will generally use the statement known as Pygame dot draw and then the shape that you want to draw. In our case, first we will draw the ball which will be circle and inside this first you will have to mention where are you going to draw the circle which will be the window. And then you will have to mention the color, which will be blue for my case. And then you will have to mention the dimensions or the positions of where you want to draw the ball, which we will define later. I'm just going to call it ball X and ball Y. And then we will also have to mention the radius. So we will have to define all of this. So what I will do is create a color section. In fact, let me just do this right around here. Colors and first define the blue color, which will be in the RGB format, which is going to be 0, 0, 0, 0,0,0,255, 5, 5. like that. Now I will define another section for the ball, and this will contain first the radius, which will be 15 pixels, and then the ball's x coordinate, comma the ball's y coordinate, which will be the entire width by 2 minus the radius. And similarly for the height, height by 2 minus the radius, like that. The reason why I'm doing this is actually when you type in width by 2, the ball's radius or the center of the ball is just going to be placed towards the right rather than the center of the screen. So when you type in by radius, what you see is the ball will be placed at the exact center like we want it to. And similarly for the height as well. So this way, we keep the ball at the exact center, which is what we want to achieve. Now when you run this code, you should be able to see a ball. And we don't. So why do you think this is happening? Well, because this statement is given to the Pygame window, but then it is not being executed because this is not updated to the latest statements. So to do this, what I will do is to type in pygame.display.update. So this way, the game is updated to the latest statements and it is being visually available as well. So now when you run this code, you will be able to see the ball. And we do. Nice. And then similarly for the paddles, we will type in pygame.draw.rect. And inside this, we will have to mention where do we want to draw this rectangle, which will be the window. And then the color, which will be red. And then rather than just giving in the dimensions like we did for the circle, we will have to type in a statement as pygame.rect and then we will have to mention the position in terms of the x coordinate and then the y coordinate followed by the paddle's width and the paddle's height. So for the positions, we will have to do it two times, one for the left and one for the right, the paddle's x and then left hand side paddle's y coordinate and then followed by the paddle width which will be same for both, comma the paddle's height. I will copy the statement and then paste it over here. 
and then change this to right, like that. Now we will have to define each and every single thing. So to do this first, I'm just going to define a section for the paddles, which I will call as paddles dimensions. And inside this first, let me just define the paddles width and the height, which will be the same for both paddle width and the paddle height. And I will call this to be 20 and 120. And then in terms of the Y coordinate, both the paddles are just going to be same. So first I will define paddles Y coordinate, left paddles Y, which will be equal to right paddles Y, which will be the entire height by two minus the paddle height by two, like that. And that dot for the paddles X coordinate for the left will be and I will also define simultaneously the right as well. For the left-hand side, it's just going to be 100 minus the paddle's width by 2. And then that for the right will be the entire width minus this thing. So I'm just going to copy this and then put this inside parentheses like this. And I will also have to define the red color, which will be in the RGB format once again. So 255, comma zero, comma zero, like that. Now we should be able to see two paddles on the screen along with the ball. We do, nice. Okay, let's get started with the movement. And as I did before, I'm just going to start with the ball. And the way I'm going to go with this is by creating a variable known as ball's velocity in terms of the X coordinate, as well as for the Y coordinate, like that, and then keep them to be one pixel comma one pixel. So what I'm going to do here is add this velocity constantly to the original position of the ball so that the position continuously changes because we're going to put that inside the main game loop. And to the human eyes, this will appear as though the ball is moving. So hopefully that makes sense. When you look at the code or when you look at the output, it'll make much more sense. So let me just create the movement section. And before that, you will put this one into objects. Post this one. And also, I have made this so that you can read the entire code like this rather than having them like this. I will keep them like, yeah. So what I will do now is just add in the velocity to the original ball's position. So ball's x will be um, velocity x. Similarly, that for the y as well. Now we haven't defined the bounces or the collisions itself, but then I want to see if the ball is making some sort of a movement on the screen. So let's just run our code and see. Okay, so first we see that the ball is moving, but then it's leaving trails rather than just moving its original position. So this can be simply corrected with a single line of code, which I will explain in a second, but first let me just type out whatever I want to. Window of fill, and then I will Fill in the black color. Define the black to be zero of red, zero of green, and zero of blue, like that. All right, so here we add the initial positions of the object, and we have also written down the statements that we use to update the positions of the ball. So we expect the ball to kind of move like this because we're updating the positions, and this updated position is used by the Pygame draw statement so that it draws onto the screen the new positions. Well, it's mostly true in this case, but it's mostly correct, but there's just one catch here, that is, each time the new position is updated and each time the pygame.draw statement draws on the window the new positions, it doesn't erase the already existing positions. So what happens is this. We see that the ball is being drawn onto the screen on top of the already existing wall position. So as it humanized, this appears as though the ball is leaving trails. So the way we correct this is by using the window.fill statement what this does is each time after we start the loop or end the loop, we just fill the window with the black color and then draw the positions once again. So that the already existing positions are erased and the ball's new position is being drawn onto the screen. And this appears as though the ball is moving to the human eyes. So let's have a look at that. What you see around here is the already existing position is being erased and the new position is being drawn each and every single time the loop is running. 
now when we run this code, we should not be seeing the ball leaving trails. And yeah, the ball moves and it goes off the screen. So what I'm going to do next is define the bounces as to if the ball hits the top boundary or the bottom boundary, then we have to make sure that the ball is bouncing and then moving. So just recall that the top boundary right here, Y position over here is going to be zero. And then over here, it is going to be 600. So first, let me just reduce the velocity a little bit to make it 0 0.7 and then 0 0.7 over here. And now let's define a section named balls movement controls like that. And then inside this, I will use conditions to check if the ball is trying to go off the screen from the top side or the bottom side. So if the ball's y coordinate is less than or equal to zero, that's the radius, because we're checking if the ball's end point is trying to touch the top boundary rather than the center. So that's why we add in the radius like this. And then similarly for the y coordinate in terms of the height. So if ball's y coordinate is greater than or equal to the entire height of the window, this time minus the radius, because again, we're checking it for the end point rather than the center. If any of these conditions is true, then we just basically reverse the direction of the fall in terms of the y coordinate alone. Like this. So this way, the ball's y coordinate direction is just changed, but the magnitude stays the same. So when you run this code, we see that the ball bounces and it goes off the screen, which is actually what we want. So what I'm going to do next is to check if the ball is going off the screen on the right hand side or the left hand side. And if it does, then we will have to reset the game and this time player two will get the serve. So this time we will have to manipulate using the X axis. So let's just check for if the ball's X coordinate is greater than or equal to the entire width minus the radius. Again, similar reasons. Then we will have to retrieve the initial positions. I will copy this and then paste it here and just change the ball's velocity to the reverse direction and do the same for Y as well. Like that. So this time, if the ball tries to go off of the screen, then it resets to the center. And then this time, layer two will get the serve. And if the similar thing happens to the left-hand side player, which is if ball takes us less than or equal to zero, which is the initial position plus the radius. Then again, we will have to retrieve the initial position as well as the initial velocity as well. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it here. Now, when you run this code, we see that the ball is going to bounce and go off the screen. Similar thing happens here. And then this goes on forever. Nice. Now let's start to make the paddles move based on the user's given input. So first, let me just define the paddle's velocity. Right paddle, well, and then left paddle, well, which will be zero as of now. And then first I will check for the user's inputs. So lfi.type is equal to high game dot key down. This signifies to check if any of the keys on the keyboard is being pressed and it will return true based on that. If it does, then we will have to check what key is it. So we will type in i.key will be pygame.k underscore up. This is kind of a notation to signify if to check if the up arrow key is being pressed. And if it is, then right battle velocity has to go up. So we will make it to be negative 0 0.9. So this way we're subtracting the white quad in its position from the paddle so that it goes up like this. And then we will do that similarly for the down arrow key as well. High game, okay, underscore down. Again, kind of a notation to signify the down arrow key is being pressed or not. And if it is, then right paddle velocity will be 0 0.9. This time we are increasing the Y coordinate so that the paddle goes down. Similarly, we will do that for the left-hand side as well. If I dot key equal to equal to, and I will use the WASD controls because that is kind of standard annotation for the left-hand side. So pi game dot K underscore W to check if the paddle is trying to go up. And if it is, then 
left battle velocity will be negative 0 0.9. And then similarly, we will check if idle key is pi game dot k underscore a. Actually, s works. Then we can make left and side velocity to be 0 0.9 like that. Now I will add this to the movements. Right paddle y less equal to right paddle velocity. And then similarly, left paddle y plus left paddle velocity. Now, actually, there's one more thing that I had to do to check if no more keys are being pressed. We can check rather than using elif, we will use if i dot type is equal to equal to i game dot key up which checks if no more further keys are being pressed or the already pressed key has been taken off. If that's the case, then we can make both the velocity to be zero again. Right paddle velocity will be zero. And then we will do that for the y coordinate. So left hand side paddle as well. Now when you run this code, you should be able to move both the paddles with the proper control. So it moves, nice. And then this as well. Excellent. Now before getting to collisions, I just want to make sure that the paddle doesn't go off the screen like this. So to do this, let's just create a section known as paddles movement controls. And over here, what I will do is first I will check if the paddle is trying to go beyond the boundaries. First, let's type in for the left-hand side paddle. If it's greater than or equal to the entire height minus the paddle height, then we just keep it there. Equal to the entire height minus the paddle height. And similarly, if it tries to go beyond the boundaries in terms of the y coordinate at the top side, if left hand side paddle y is less than or equal to zero, then we just keep it there. Left paddle y will be zero. Now we will do this for the right hand side by just copy pasting this. Control Z. Paste this here and then change this to right. Now let's run our code and see. And we see that the paddle is not going off the screen, which is exactly what we wanted to happen over here as well. Nice. Now let's get to the collisions. So the idea here is just very simple. If the ball's position is somewhere within the range of the paddle's position in terms of the X coordinate and in terms of the Y coordinate, then we just have to make sure that the ball's direction reverses only in the terms of the X coordinate. Again, here we are in the initial positions. And the first thing that I want to show you is whenever you type in left paddle X or right paddle X, whenever you want the first initial positions of the paddle, it is always going to be on the top left hand side, which is indicated by the small yellow circle. When you actually want to access the initial position to the right paddle, you just type in right paddle X. And here as well, the small yellow circle is indicating that. So what we want is the collision to happen on this face of the paddle, that is on the right hand side face of the left hand side paddle. So what we have to do is, is also add in the paddle bit so that the position is now on to the phase where we want. Whereas when you get to right paddle, we don't actually need to do that. Let me just show you here. We see that the collisions has to happen on the left phase of this paddle. So we don't need to add in the paddle width. Whereas if we do, then the cursor is going to move towards the right hand side, which is not actually what we want. First, I just want to cut this and paste it above movements. Paste it here and then define collisions over here. Now let's just start by checking if the ball's X position is within the range of the paddle's X position. This should be greater than or equal to left paddle X, but then it should be less than or equal to left paddle X plus the actual paddle width, like that. And then we will also have to make sure that the ball's y position is also in the range of the paddle's y. So that's paddle y should be less than or equal to ball's y, which should be less than or equal to less the paddle height. I did that. Then what we will do is first we will keep the ball at the retreat phase or the edge of the paddle itself and then reverse the direction. So ball's x will be left paddle x 
plus the battle width. And then we reverse the direction in terms of the x coordinate into equal to negative one. We will do that for the right hand side paddle as well. But before that, let me just run our code and see if the collision is actually working for the left hand side. It does. Nice. So we just have to do that for the right hand side paddle as well. We will do that. I'll just copy this and paste it here. Then change this to right first. And then we won't need this anymore because we're just keeping it at the left face of the right hand side paddle. So we just keep it as it is and then reverse the direction. Now when you run our code and see, we see that both the paddles are making collisions properly and we have reflections. Nice. So this is creative angles. So, so far we've kept the velocity in terms of x to be equal to velocity y and we would always end up with the direction like this each and every single time the game resets and this is indicated by this green line. So the ball would make a movement direction like this and then it resets to the center. Now this time, let's say I'm going to add in another statement. Let's say I'm going to keep velocity in terms of x to be two times velocity y and then we would get an angle like this. So the ball would move in this direction. Now again, I will add in another statement and this time I will keep velocity y to be two times velocity x and we would end up with an angle like this, which is again indicated by this green line. Now the ball would make the movement like this and what I'm going to do is also do this for the top side as well, so that in total we get six angles. And then provide the machine the choice to choose first the ball should move on the top side or should it move on the bottom side. And then choose the respective angle of the three choices that is provided. So let's take a look at the code implementation. Okay, so now we will have to import random. Import random. And then I will create two new variables. One for the direction at which the ball should move. We will randomize that with zero and one, zero signifying top and one is going to signify bottom. We will do that for the angle as well. I will have three different angles. Zero will stand for y being two times of x and one where x and y are the same and two where x is two times of y. Now we will scroll down all the way to where we reset the game. So right around here, after retrieving the initial positions of the ball, we will now have to randomize where the ball will move either the top side or the bottom side. So first, let's create a variable inside this and use the random your choice option to get a random choice of the direction. And similarly, we will do that for angle as well. Random dot choice of angle like that. Now I will first check for the direction if direction equals to zero. That means that the ball will have to move top side. So we have to keep the velocity in terms of y coordinate to be negative. But first, I will also check for the angle. If angle equals to zero, then that means y is going to be two times of x. So ball velocity y, comma ball velocity x, will be negative 1.4, comma 0 0.7, followed by if angle equals to one, then we can have both of them to be same. Ball velocity x will be negative 0 0.7 comma 0 0.7 like that. And if the angle is equal to two, then ball velocity y comma ball velocity x will be of the sorts where negative 0 0.7 comma 1.4 like that. Now I will copy this and do that for the downward direction as well, where direction equals one. I will paste it right around here and then make direction to be one and then take off all of the negative signs like that. And now since we randomized the direction in terms of top side or bottom side, we won't need this anymore. Whereas we will have to have ball velocity X. Clean this off. And for the right hand side, if the ball goes out of bounds from the left hand side, so the ball has to move towards the right hand side. So we can just copy this once again, right around from here, all the way down here, control C. And then I will paste it here. 
and we don't need to have in this statement because we want the bolt directly to move towards the right hand side rather than changing the direction towards the left. So now when we run our code, we should get three different creative angles each time the ball is reset. So we run our code and see. We see the first angle, we see the second one, and we see the third. Really nice. I just want to show you the prompt of how the new element that we're trying to add into the game should look like. It says active, which means that it has to be manually activated by the user. And it says, once activated, the next collision of the ball onto the paddle should reflect the ball back at 3.5 times the original speed as a surprise to the opponent. This means that this is kind of a smash element and this has to be activated manually by the user. This will be the logic that we will be implementing for the gadget. So let's say that this is a given position and as soon as the ball comes to the bottom boundary, we just use the statement to reflect the ball's direction and it moves up. So what happens here is the ball approaches towards the paddle and as soon as it comes in contact with the paddle, we, other than just multiplying it with negative one, we multiply it with negative 3.5. This way, this negative sign ensures that the ball is reflected back, but then this 3.5 ensures that the ball is moving very fast and it surprised the opponents. So that will be the logic that we will be working on for this gadget. Let's see how it works. So for the gadgets, first I will move outside the main game loop and create a section for the gadgets. Like that. Also, make sure to have some space here. And over here, what we can do is first I will create the activation variable to check if the gadget is being activated or not. So left underscore gadget will be equal to right underscore gadget, which by default is turned off. If the gadget is turned on, then this will become one for the respectives. Now I will create a variable for the maximum amount of gadgets. So that will be left gadget remaining, which will be equal to the right gadget remaining which will be five for my case you can have how much ever maximum gadgets as you wish now we will have to trigger the activation as in if a button is pressed then we will have to make sure that the gadget is being activated so to do this first we will go to i.key section over here first i will do for the arrows area if i.key equal to equal to pi game dot right. That is the right arrow key. And we will also have to make sure that the gadget remaining is greater than zero, right? Gadget remaining should be greater than zero. Then we can have the right gadget to be activated equal to one like that. And I will move down for the left hand side paddle. If I dot key is equal to pi game dot kd that is the right arrow for the asdw keys then and also i have to make sure that the left gadget remaining is greater than one left gadget remaining is greater than zero then we can make the left gadget to be one that is the activated case equals one like that. Now I will scroll down and create a new section right around here. Gadgets in action. So we will first define what the gadgets have to do. It's just the same thing. If the ball is within the range of the paddle, then rather than just reversing the direction alone, we will reverse the direction in 3.5 times the original speed. So I will copy this and first check if left gadget is activated or not. If left gadget is equal to one, then I will paste this. And then rather than having this as negative one, I will have this to be negative 3.5. And now I will make the left gadget to be zero and also left gadget remaining minus equal to one because we have to negate one each time a gadget is being used. So now we will do that for the right hand side gadget as well. If right gadget, and just scroll down a little bit, equal to one, and then we can copy this 
and paste it right around here like that and have this to be negative 3.5 followed by right gadget making it to be zero once again and we're doing this to make sure that once the reflection has happened once the ball has been returned in 3.5 times the original speed the gadget is no longer effective they will have to activate it once again to make the same movement once again so right gadget remaining will again be negative equals one. We will have to negate one so that the number of remaining gadgets is reduced each and every time they use the gadgets. So now let's run our code and see if the gadget is working. This is the original reflection speed. Now I've activated the gadget and it does really nice. Also, the prompt says that as a slight indication to the opponent, once the gadget is activated, there should be a small circle inside the paddle. So to do this, it's just very, very simple. We will go down to the objects section and over here, let me just do this and check if left gadget is first activated or not. Left gadget equals one. Then we will have to draw something else. Iam dot raw dot circle and window white color we haven't defined white we will do that and then we will have to keep the ball within the rectangle that we created so we will do that by typing in left paddle x plus 10 and similarly in terms of y as well left paddle y plus 10 like that followed by the radius it's just radius is going to be let's say four it has to be a small circle and we will do that for the right hand side paddle as well if right gadget is activated that means it should be one then pi game dot draw in fact let's just copy this control c paste it here and then change this to be right paddle x and over here as well like that now we have to define the white color, so I'm just going to go to the colors section. And over here I will define for white. White will be 255, 255, 255. We will now run our code and see if a slight indication circle is being drawn onto the paddle if the gadget is activated. And we do. We do for the right hand side paddle, now I will do it for the left hand side as well. Yep, it does work. And once the collision happens, it goes off. Nice. So the prompt for the flash gadget says that active, which again means that has to be manually activated by the user. And it says immediately after activation, the paddle should teleport itself towards the ball's current position in terms of the Y coordinate. The logic for the flash element is just very, very simple. Let's take this for example, the ball is approaching downwards as well as the paddle. But for some case, if the paddle is unable to reach the ball, and if the gadget, if the splash gadget is being activated, then we simply use this statement. That is, we just change the paddle's y coordinate to where the ball's y coordinate is, and the paddle teleports itself to the ball's y coordinate like this. So let's take a look at the code implementation and see if this works. Now, for the second gadget, we will check for the input from the user first. Right around here. If i dot key equal to high game dot left this time. K left, the left arrow key. And also make sure that right gadget remaining is greater than zero. Then we make right gadget to be two, which signifies for the second gadget. We will do that over here as well. If I dot key equal to high game dot A. Okay, and let's go A like that and we will also have to make sure that the left gadget remaining is greater than zero like that and then left gadget will be two in this case now we will go down to the gadget and action section and over here we will check if left gadget two then we just make the left battle y 
that is the position of the paddle in terms of the y coordinate to be the ball's y coordinate itself like that and now we will have to make the left gadget to be zero and also subtract a number from the number of gadgets remaining we will do that for the right hand side paddle as well if right we won't use ellis ellis right gadget equal to two then make right paddle y to be equal to the ball's y coordinate like that make right gadget to be zero and also subtract a number from the number of gadgets remaining like that let's run a code and see if the other gadget is working as well when we press the left arrow key and it does really nice we will do that for the left hand side paddle as well and it works beautifully now when you look at the prompt for the cloning gadget you see that it's active and once activated the next collision of the ball onto the paddle should clone the ball to confuse the opponent one being original and the other one being duplicate this is going to be the logic that we will be putting into this gadget so if we take a look back we have defined the reflection physics for the ball we have also defined the collision physics for the ball and we have also made sure that the movements are working properly so what i'm going to do is just draw another circle for the entire game and then put this on top of the ball such that it's just hidden behind it and i'm going to put each and every single metric the reflection the collisions and the movements exactly to be the same as for the original ball so that when the gadget is actually put into action, let's say that the ball is moving in this direction. So both the circles is just simultaneously going to move in this direction. And right as it approaches the paddle, let's say in this direction, it just does this. Both goes in different direction in terms of the y coordinate. This is just by changing the dummy ball's direction in terms of the y coordinate. And then they both go in different directions. One is going to be original and the other one is going to be duplicate, meaning that the meaning that if the original ball comes in contact with the other paddle, then the reflections happen normally, whereas if the player 2 is confused and goes for the dummy ball, then it would do nothing and then the game resets, giving player 1 the point. That's the whole point of having this gadget. Let's take a look at the code implementation of how this works. So we will have to make changes to all of the sections that is on your screen and we will start with from the ball section. I'm just going to copy this and then paste it here. This is called the creation of the dummy ball x, so I'm just going to have dummy ball x as the prefix dummy ball x we'll do that over here as well and over here as well nice now we will need to scroll down all the way to balls movement controls and over here the logic is just going to be the same just going to copy the first if condition and then paste it just change the variable name to dummy over here as well and then we will reverse the direction for the dummy ball velocity like that and then inside this first we will have to retrieve the positions for the dummy ball as well so i'm just going to copy this and paste it here change the variable names to dummy and over here as well and then right inside the if condition i will actually copy this one as well and then paste it change the names like that and change the names to dummy ball velocity we will do that over here as well similarly we will do to this one So after completing all of those, you will also have to remember that we have to change the direction in terms of the dummy ball as well. So I'm just going to paste this and change the name to dummy like that. And now we will have to do the same thing over here as well. Let's receive the positions by copying it and paste it here and then change the names. Dummy. And then get inside the if condition to change the ball velocities. We will do that over here as well. Copy this. We 
Next, we will have to get to the paddles collisions and inside the latest if, that is the condition is just going to be the same. Rather than just changing the direction of the normal ball, we're also going to change the direction of the dummy ball as well with the same condition. So we're not going to declare that for the dummy ball. I'm just going to change the direction directly. If the original ball is in the contact of the paddles, then this ball, the dummy ball, also should reverse the direction. That's the logic. We will have to, we will also have to do that over here. But before that, I will also retrieve the positions to keep that at the edge of the paddles. Paste this and then make this to be dummy ball. Like that, we will have to do. We will also have to do it over here as well. Now, before getting to the gadgets and actions section, all that we have defined so far inside the gadgets section is for the gadget pair one. We will also have to do it for the second gadget. But before that, we will have to ask the user on which gadget should they start with. So what I'm going to do is, before doing anything with Pygame, I will first. Declare the gadget pair by default is going to be one, and then I will ask for the input of the user. Input enter your choice, enter your choice for we'll gadget pair. And then what we will do is actually first let me just convert this to int. And then what we will do is we will first check for the condition if ch equal to one, then we keep gadget pair to be one. That is ch equal to two. Then we will keep gadget pair to be two. Now that's decided. We will fast scroll down to gadget and action section. And inside this, what we will do is first copy all of this right around here and press tab. Because what we will do is first check for the gadget pair if gadget pair. Uh, equal to one, then we will execute all of the commands that are inside this. And if gadget pair equal to two, then we will have to, then we will have to start with the cloning section that is ball cloning and paddle cloning. So what we will do is as defined earlier, we're just going to change the dummy balls direction when the gadget is actually activated. So what we will do is go to the left paddles collisions and we will copy this and paste it here. Now, rather than just changing the direction in terms of the X coordinate, what we will do is we will also change the direction in terms of the Y coordinate so that one ball will move towards the bottom side or the top side and the other ball will move to the exact opposite in terms of the Y coordinate. So when we type in dummy ball velocity Y, and then multiply that into equal to minus one, I forgot to mention one thing. The left gadget should be one. Then we will execute this condition. So we'll put this in tab. And then we will make left gadget to be zero. And then gadget remaining, left gadget remaining, negative equals a one. We will simultaneously do that for the right hand side gadget as well. Um, tab if right gadget equals one. We will copy from the right gadget uh, right paddle collisions. Paste it here. And then what we will do is again change the dummy ball's direction in terms of the white coordinate as well. Into equal to minus one. And then make right gadget to be zero. And then also make right gadget remaining negative equal to one. And we will get to movements and also add this for the dummy ball as well. Dummy ball x plus equal to dummy ball velocity x followed by dummy ball y plus two dummy ball velocity y. We will also have to draw the circle. So what we will do is I will copy this and then paste it over here maybe. Actually, I will paste it over here. Dummy 
world section. Paste it here. Change this to dummy ball X. Change the name over here as well. Change this to like this. We also come down to gadgets and action section. Also make sure that the dummy ball is reflected back at 3.5 times the original speed as well. Because even though this comes under the gadget bar one, we have to make sure that both the circles are making simultaneous movement. So what I will do is just keep the dummy ball velocity X, maybe negative 3.5, like that. And I will do this for the right gadget as well. Copy the statement. and then keep this to be dummy like that and now let's run our code and see so first we will have to enter our gadget pair choice I'm just going to keep this too because we're testing we press enter we see originally that the ball is going in the same direction and then we're not seeing the second ball but then when you activate the gadget like this you see two balls like that very nice we will check that for the other side gadget as well. If I can hit. Yeah, it's working. Very good. And so here is the prompt of the final gadget. It again has to be manually activated by the user. And it says immediately after activation, the paddle should clone itself, both being original and thus providing more area control. Logic is again just drawing the second paddle and on top of the original paddle and then make movements normally and simultaneously and whenever the gadget is activated we separate them by let's say 200 pixels by just adding in 200 pixels and then it provides us that battle cloning effect so let's take a look at the code implementation of how this works as well again we will have to make changes to the necessary sections and we will start with the pedals dimensions by creating the second battle and this time i'm going to have a prefix of second rather than having this to be dummy because this time the paddle is actually not being dummy like the ball so first I will copy this and paste it here and then add the prefix second. And right around here as well. Like that. And I will also create velocities for the second paddle. What I will do is copy paste this and have second over here. Now we will get to the input section and over here we will have to check if the up arrow key is being pressed and if it is then not only we should move the original paddle we will also have to move the second paddle as well which is on top of the original paddle second paddle mode equal to 0 0.9 negative 0 0.9 like that we will do that over here as well second right paddle velocity equal to 0 0.9 if the down arrow key is being pressed we will do that over here as well Now we should get to paddles movement, which is right around here. And we just simply copy paste this. This is just making sure that the paddle doesn't go off the screen either by the top side or the bottom side. We will have to do that for the second paddle as well. So I'm just going to paste this and add the prefix second. Next, we will have to get to paddles collisions. And over here, we can't just simply copy paste the collisions like this. Let me explain why. So the reason why we can't just copy paste the collisions for the second paddle is because let's say if the ball is approaching towards the paddle and remember that there is two paddles, one on top of the other. So if we define collisions for them both at the same time, then there is going to be two collisions happening. At the first collision, the ball would change the direction this way. But since there is another paddle on top of this, the direction is again going to change and anyways the ball is just going to go off the screen which is not actually what we want and the way we correct this is by first checking if the positions of these two paddles are not equal let's say if they are separated like this that is if the gadget is in action then if the ball is approaching towards the top paddle that's the primary paddle then a collision would happen normally and then if we define for the secondary paddle as well then again a collision is going to happen normally so that's the logic that we have to work on let's look at how that works 
And hence, we will have to first define the if condition to check if the second battle velocity, actually the second battle x or the second battle y is equal to the original paddle, which is the left paddle y. And if it is, then we should only define collisions for one of these. I'm just going to keep the original paddle like that. And we will have to do that if to check if they both are not equal, not equal to left paddle y. Then we will first have to define for this. So we'll copy this and then paste it here. And then I will also paste it once again because we will have to also do that for the second battle as well. Just paste it here and then add the prefix second. So now if the ball comes in contact with either of the paddles, then it gets simply reflected back, which is actually what we want. Now we will do that for the right hand side paddle as well. First check if the coordinates are the same. If second white paddle y equals to white paddle y, then we can just have this as it is. Press tab and copy this. Get right around here and check if they both are not equal. Right paddle y, second right paddle y, not equal to right paddle y. Let me just paste it. Come over here and paste it once again. And over here, add the prefix second. And then you get to the gadgets and accent section, scroll down to second pair and check if the left gadget is equal to two. That is the second gadget if it is being activated. So if actually Ellis left gadget equal to two, then we keep the second left battle Y to be left battle Y plus 200. Now this will lead to the paddle cloning itself to the human eye. And then we can just simply make left gadget to be zero. And also subtract one from the gadgets remaining. Left gadget remaining minus equal to one. We will do that for the right hand side as well. And this right gadget equal to two. And then we just make the second right paddle y to be right paddle y plus 200 like that and make right gadget to be zero also subtract one from the right gadget remaining like that now we will get to the movements as well and over here we will define for the second battle seconds left battle y plus equal to second left battle well followed by second right battle y plus equal to second right battle well like that we will have to draw that over here so i will create another section second battle and i will copy both the battles this and paste it over here and then just change this to the prefix second. Also, I forgot to mention one thing. When you get to the input section, that is here, we also have to make sure that when no key is being pressed, then the second velocity, that is the second part of velocity, should also be zero. Zero. Or by second right paddle velocity v0 as well now let's run our code and see if the second paddle is appearing on the screen when we activate the gadget so first let's type in two and we see that now we have only one paddle but when you press the left arrow key or the a key then the left the second gadget will be activated and if second gadget is activated then we should see the paddle cloning like that we do nice 
So right around here, when you activate the gadget like this, and if the game resets, originally we just want the game to reset with the paddles as well, but that is not happening in this case because we haven't defined it to. We will have to make sure that once the game resets, the paddles also reset to its original position. So the way we do this is by going to the vault movement control section over here. Once the game resets every time, what we do is add in two lines over here. That is the second left paddle Y will be left paddle Y. That is resetting back to the original position. We will do that for the right hand side paddle as well. Second right paddle Y will be right paddle Y like that. And then we will do that for the second if as well. That is if the ball goes off the screen on the left hand side. Then again, second right paddle Y will be right paddle Y. And we will do that for the left hand side paddle. Second left paddle Y equal to left paddle Y. Now we should have everything according to our needs. Let's try a code and see. Type in two. Over here, I will activate my gadget right around now. Over here as well. I'm trying to miss. Actually, I can't miss. And yeah, over here we see that once the game resets, the paddle also reset, which is actually what we want. I will show it to you right here as well. Yep, we get it. All right, all that is left down is just the scoreboard and the end screen. So in order to calculate the score, first we will get to the initial section and then I will create two new variables. Player one, comma. Actually, both will start off at zero. So player two will also be equal to zero. Player one will be referring to the left-hand side player and player two will be referring to the right-hand side player. And we scroll down all the way to ball's movement controls and over here, we see that the ball is going off the screen by right hand side. So over here, player one will get a point plus equal to one because since the ball is going off of the screen from the right hand side, the left hand side player will get the point. Now, if you scroll down to the other if condition over here, ball goes off the screen from the left hand side. So player two will get a point this time. Player two plus equal to one. So that's how you calculate score. Now, how do we write this on the window? So I will scroll all the way down and over here, before getting to the objects section, right around here, after movements, I will create a new section scoreboard. So first we will need to get a font through which we have to write on the window. Font will be pygame dot system font, the font dot sys font like that. And then for simplicity, I will just use Calibri. And then we also have to mention the size, which again, for simplicity, I will be keeping that as two. I will be keeping that as 32. Now I will create another variable score, and then I will type in font.render. This is just basically instructing the program to use the font that we just imported and, and generate the text that I'm just going to type in, which will be player one, then do this, plus str, I'm just going to make this string of player one, true. Come on, we also have to mention the color. I will just keep white for simplicity. Now we have everything ready. We just have to write this onto our window. How do we do this? We just type in window.blit. We mentioned what we had to write in, which is the score. And then we also have to mention the positions. So in terms of the X coordinate, I will first keep this to be 25 and in Y as well. I'm just going to keep this 25. Now I will just copy this and then paste this once again over here. And then I'll change this to player two over here as well. And then change the X coordinate to around about say 825 and keep Y axis as it is. Now we will quickly run our currency. Get it part to be two. And yes, it works. We see player one scores one and player two scores one as well. Nice. Now we will also have to do that to mention the number of gadgets remaining. So what I will do is first, let's just name this to be score one and score two. And what I will do is I will create another new variable gadget left one. 
And similarly, actually, I just have to change it over here as well. It's here. What can be font.render? Let's type in gadget left. Put a space. Plus, can make the str and left gadget remaining. True. Followed by the color, which I will add this as white, like that. And we will type in window.blit. Gadget left one. The positions this time will be 25, comma 65. We are just off placing it a little bit in terms of the Y quadrant. I will just copy this and paste it here. Make this to be gadget left two. And then make this right gadget remaining and this to be 825. So now let's just run our code and see if gadgets is being shown. Let's type in two. And we see the number of gadgets left is five and the core board is also ticking. Nice. Okay, so all that is left out now is the end screen. So let's scroll all the way down and create the section over here. And inside this, first we will create the winning font, which is just the same thing but then I will keep the size to be 100. And then now I will check if either of the players are greater than three points. This is the winning cap. This is the winning limit. You can have the, you can have whatever number you want, but I'm just for simplicity to show you that the end screen element is actually working. I'm just going to keep it at three so that the end screen will be, so that the game would end faster. Greater than or equal to three. And what we do first is fill the window by using the window.fill statement with the black color. And then we will type in the end screen variable to be font.render, actually winning font.render. And then say player one, one. Keep the anti alias to be true. And then mention the color. I will keep this to be white, which we already find. And then blip this onto our window. Window.blip. End screen. Mention the coordinates. I'm just going to keep it to be 200 in terms of X and 250 in terms of Y, let's say, and see if this is working. I will also do this for the player two as well. Just copy this, paste it right around here, and change this to player two. Like that. Now let's run our code and see if it's working. Enter the gadget choice to be one. Go over here. Right, as player two gets three points, it displays that player two won the game. Really nice. And here it is, the modified phone game. Now, if you made it up to this point of the video, then I just want to say thank you for sticking with me. Now, I again do recommend to check our channel out. There's just tons more in there. So that's it. Bye-bye. Hopefully you see that.